course, one of the fun things for us has been finding some Olympians who are living right here in the Tampa Bay area. It really has been, and I had the pleasure of meeting up not only with an Olympian, but a medal winner. Jim Milnes is the epitome of an Olympic ambassador for the U.S. Nearly 40 years after he made it to the podium, he is still honoring the sport he loves and encouraging others to follow their Olympic dreams. Our United States champions, Colleen O'Connor and Jim Milnes. In 1976, ice dancing was included in the Winter Olympics for the first time. Forward movement, a lot of speed, a lot of deep edges, and a lot of strong skating. And Jim Milnes was there. He and partner Colleen O'Connor earned a bronze medal, a medal he still proudly shows off. I was very proud of the performance we did there. I was pleased, I was happy. Um, I've also heard all kinds of stories. If I had a gold or a silver medal, I'd have to take it out and polish it a lot. Bronze, you don't have to polish. He admits the ribbon is a bit tattered and torn because he likes to travel around and talk to kids about his experience. And travel, he has. He estimates this medal has been in the hands of at least 30,000 children. But I won this for the U.S. And, and when you stand on that platform and, and you see that flag go up, the symbol of freedom and justice known throughout the world goes up for something you did, it changes you. And, and I just knew I had to come back and share it with everybody. Being an Olympian is worth any sacrifice, effort, or anything you can do. For Jim and his partner Colleen, that sacrifice meant hours on the ice. We skated from 11 at night till 6 in the morning. We'd sleep for a couple hours and skate again from 10 until 12. For the Olympians of the 76 Games, there was more to worry about than just competing. Remember, these were the first Olympic Games since Munich, when a massacre took the lives of 11 Israeli athletes and coaches, a West German police officer, and ultimately the five terrorists. The ripple effect was felt by Jim and his fellow Olympians. We were rather startled when our bus drove up to Olympic Village. We were instantly boarded by soldiers, full combat gear, who frisked us, shoved us around, and the gross reality of the stage that we were on at that moment hit us. The same reality that this year's Sochi competitors are dealing with in light of threats of terror by so-called black widows. Just That's part of what makes an Olympian special is that, first of all, you always have all the, the tension from the standpoint it is once every four years it is the Olympics. Then you add in the press and the media. Now we're adding in an extra mix of this whole issue of security and terrorism. It's a real pressure on the athletes, but you know what? The real athletes surface. This is what really drives them, it moves them, it motivates them. So I expect to see exceptional performances, especially from the U.S. team. So how about that energy? Mm -hmm. He has so much energy passion. and passion, and he still coaches and mentors and, and just loves his Olympic experience and is so happy to share it. He's a great guy. I really enjoyed well, my time with him. Looks like you did, and you've had more from that ice rink, too. We do. Up, right? Tonight we have a, a brother and sister team, tonight at 11 or 11.30 after the Olympics, a brother and sister team, and kind of how they're trying to make their way. Tonight, a trip to a Bay Area rink in Oldsmar where those dreams are taking shape for a brother and sister team and a coach who lived that journey himself. Almost. Almost. Still looking down. Alex Vlasov is a tough taskmaster. Nearly four hours a day, six days a week, he puts siblings William and Jojo Hubbard through a challenging workout on the ice. That's because he knows firsthand what it takes to get to the Olympics. Do you think they have the potential to be Definitely. Olympians? Definitely. What, what makes you say that? they competitors. They like to be better every time they compete. That's the, that's the best you can ask. Alex didn't make it to the podium in the 76 Innisbrook Games. He finished fourth in the Pairs competition. That experience shapes his expectations as a coach. Experience. I can, ex I can share experience. I can say what it means, how to stay in front of crowd, how to present yourself, what to learn, and how to avoid some mistakes. This brother and sister team relies on their close relationship to translate onto the ice. We have a lot of deja vu moments finishing our same sentences. It's crazy. They are homeschooled together, spend hours on the ice together, and share the same goals. A lot of the times, it's since we are brother and sister, we can spend a lot of time at home and communicate with each other about how what we're going to do and this and that. So we kind of know, like, if we're not feeling very good and stuff, we can kind of talk it over with each other. They understand each other. They can communicate better, especially in the pair teams. You have to be very close. They have to share everything in your life. Basically, they share everything in life. So when he drops you? <laughs> 
He's in trouble. <laughs> because every time, every every element in a paired event, it depends on both. You can help your partner, but sometimes it's your own mistake, sometimes it's your partner's mistakes. And finally, this hard-hitting question. How do you know where you are when you come out of one of those crazy spins? Every time you just, you exit the same way and it gets like muscle memory and you understand where you're going and you practice and practice it. In tonight's Olympic competition, the Bay Area was represented by three different pairs teams. Coming up later in sports, meet the skating coach who played a big part in their success. Winter Olympics are, uh, may have you wanting to hit the ice. It's certainly been a while since I did, so I got some help from a couple of world medalists who on this Valentine's Day make a great pair on and off the ice. Sean Rice and Jodine Higgins can finish each other's sentences. And why not? They've basically been joined at the hip and on the ice for 23 years. So we actually got paired up together. And when I was little, to make a long story short, I didn't really care for Sean because we used to compete against each other. She loved me from the moment she met me. <laughs> Their spiral sequence. Forced to skate together, they developed a bond, then a friendship that eventually turned to romance. They've now been together 23 years, competed on Canada's national team eight years in a row, then turned pro and traveled the world. Skating is a part of our soul. Sean laughingly says he picks up chicks for a living. Well, I tested that claim with the guidance of Jodine. So you want to make sure that you keep your knees over your toes. Okay. And if you do feel like you're going to lose balance at all, mm -hmm. you want to grab those knees. Back in the day, I actually could glide along the ice, not very well, but at least without an adult on each side holding me up. There you go. And two foot slide. There you go. Now you're skating. I'm skating. Yeah. Well, sort of. Yeah. Right. Left. Two foot wide. Wide. Eyes up. Ah. Ah. Oh my God, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Left. Big smile. Big foot wide. And go. Yeah. How about that? How about that? <laughs> now, you didn't throw up, though, did you? you? You just felt for a moment. It's just so embarrassing. But I certainly had fun, and they were awesome. And yeah. happy Valentine's Day, you two, with their little baby, Signe. Yeah, well, what do you call that move when you, you do that? What do you call that? I call it getting picked up by a guy. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it has a name for it, but you I don't know. You owned it, whatever it was. <laughs> you owned it. Well done, Gail. What do you Thank think, you. Steve?